We are six days from leaving on a Caribbean cruise to the Bahamas and Cozumel, and we're going for the very first time on Celebrity Cruises. It's a cruise line we've never tried before, so we are anxious to get on that ship and then give you our thoughts on that cruise line. If you're just joining us, welcome to All Things Wagner. We are Sherry and JJ, and we talk about cruise and travel tips and occasionally some other stuff. We just got back from Christmas break, and here we are rushing around to leave again in six days for our January cruise. By the way, if you're looking for a really good deal, January is a good time to look at booking a cruise. So if you're looking at 20 five cruises or 26 cruises look around january february because the prices really drop because it's off season off season if you will and people are done with all their holiday cruising that's just an fyi generally when we're talking about caribbean cruises i used to overpack <laughs> yeah i still overpack i'm not even gonna try to lie about it but this is what I've learned over the years is that what I used to do the first few cruises that we took were on cruise 20. I used to take t-shirts and shorts top clothing for every day. And then I realized that before we started a YouTube channel and we were all over the ship <laughs> vlogging and filming, we would spend half the day out by the pool. So we were in swimwear and covers flip-flops even we would put on our covers and go to the buffet and then go back out to the pool and so we didn't need t-shirts and shorts top clothes for every day and even the days we were in port if we had like a beach day excursion then we were also in swimwear and covers for the entire part of the day we would come back to the ship and get ready and go immediately into dinner wear. So again, we didn't need that t-shirt and shorts for seven or five days for that entire cruise. So that saves some room in packing. So if you're a veteran cruiser or you've been on several cruises, think about that for your packing. It's like, do we really need, or, do I, or maybe you're the opposite. Do I really need so many bathing suits? Are we out by the pool every single day? Um, or are we playing bingo and trivia? And do I need more shorts and t-shirts clothes? So keep that in mind. If you're new to cruising, then look at your schedule and your itinerary, how many days you have in port, what you're gonna be doing in port. Maybe you do need um, maybe a jacket if it might, a rainstorm might come. If you have like a food tour or a tour of the city or something like that, and you're not gonna be at the beach. So. It matters what your itinerary and your schedule are, so be sure and look at that when you're thinking about your clothes. So these are the clothes that we're taking. We are in Bahamas. We're going to Margaritaville, and we have rented a cabana for the day. We've never been to Bahamas in 20 cruises. <laughs> 19 cruises, actually. This will be 20. So we're excited about trying out Margaritaville. And then in Cozumel, we're going back to Paradise Beach. So we will have two port days that are both beach days. This is celebrity. They're a little more dressy. So when I go through some of the clothing, I'll explain to you that we don't always wear this kind of clothes, maybe for dinner. It's because celebrity is like supposed to be a step up from Royal Caribbean. We'll see and we'll let you know. So they might expect a little more dressy in the main dining room, like no shorts, for instance. Some so. of these outfits are from Amazon. So if they are, I'll let you know and I'll put the link below in case you want to look at that outfit or something similar to it. So this is an outfit that I really liked. Um, I wore it on embarkation day for explorer of the seas, I think. Anyway, we have all of our vlogs on our channel and they're divided into playlists. So if you're interested in a specific ship or a specific port, like we have a Western Caribbean ports and we have Eastern Caribbean ports. So um, you can look into those if you're interested. So I really like this outfit. It's really like loose fitting and these pants are lined down to here. And so, you know, they won't show anything. This is a fake tie string so it doesn't really tighten and this actually was a longer top and I cut it off because just because of how I'm built and I, I cut it off but it's longer if you like longer tops or want to tuck it in or whatever but this is generally the kind of thing I wear on embarkation day because I want to be comfy and not messing with my clothes and I want to be able to layer maybe like this happens to be January and so we're, but we're going to Fort Lauderdale and we're going to be cruising out of Fort Lauderdale and it's supposed to be mid-70s the day that we embark. So 
it might be important to layer because when we leave Love Field in January, it's probably going to be cold. It's probably going to be 30 something the morning that we leave. So I will need to be able to layer clothes for when we get to Fort Lauderdale, start peeling off clothes because it's going to be warm there. So the, these are, this is another blouse that I like. It's off the, can be worn off the shoulder or on the shoulder. It's also Amazon and it comes in a lot of different colors. So as you can see, it has an elastic, um, neckline again to be worn off or on the shoulders and it's a loose bottom so if you kind of have some around the middle and you want to cover that up or you just want to do like i'm doing a little french tuck here in the front then this is the shirt for you and again it comes in lots of uh, different colors and you can wear this with shorts or linen pants or and that's what i usually pair mine with i have several pairs this is not from amazon this is actually from venus that's another like swimwear beachwear a uh, good company that if you want to try they're online just venus.com um linen pants i love on cruises during the day because they're cool and they go with anything and you can just tuck a little t-shirt or tank top i often wear huh, gee i wonder where i got this i often get tanks or t-shirts in port and then i wear them forever so i have this one um and of course you know, I got one in Cayman Islands and I got another one, a different colored one in Cozumel. But you know, you have to kind of look through the shops and tell which ones are good material and which ones might not be, especially in Cozumel because that cruise port is so amazing. Um, so again, linen pants. This is another pair of um, just kind of, it's not actually linen, but it's a cotton material. I also got this from Amazon. And so, and this comes in a couple of different colors, but these are really comfortable and I just wear them with flats. I will show you shoes later on. Um, but right now this is just women's clothing we're talking about. So these are the kind of pants that I like to wear. I just got these from Amazon because I was looking for a new black pair of like linen comfy pants. I grew out of my others. And so, and these are really cool. I don't know if you can see this, but if you can see my hand all the way down, it's got this seam on the side that you know shows your legs so they're very summery and breezy and so again i'll link those below um, this is an actual drawstring as well and they come in several colors as well they come in like white and a pink um and maybe like a tan this is another pair of very comfy loose fitting black with pockets love the pockets you can keep your a sea pass card or whatever in them if you're not a lanyard top gal which i'm not it's like rayon or probably a polyester type material it's a little thicker than rayon um, but these i even wear for dinner and i will definitely cover dinner wear here in a second but these could be worn during the day if you want to go to trivia or bingo or whatever and you don't want to wear shorts bingo is often in the theater and i'm telling you if you're cold natured at all you will freeze in the theater and maybe in the main dining room. So keep that in mind if you're going to play games somewhere. If you're going to a lounge or somewhere around, you won't, for, and obviously on deck, you, you won't be cold at all. In fact, you'll probably be warm. These could be worn for dinner. You could put like a blouse, this blouse with these pants for dinner in the main dining room and you're loose and comfy and cool. Okay, so that's generally what I wear during the day. Um, here's another blouse that could be worn either in the evening or during the day for, I got this from Amazon as well. And it has a snap right here. So you could wear a little, like a cami or a tank under it if you want to be a little more um, covered up. But you know, like this could also go to the dining room. An outfit like this could go to the dining room in the evening um, or you could wear it around the ship during the day. This t-shirt also came from Amazon and I just thought it was really cute. You know, it's kind of got a unique sleeve there. And if you want to cover up your arms a little more uh, than something like a tank top, I got this in this color and in white as well. And it's a real comfortable t-shirt. For evening wear, I used to always go to maxi dresses. That was my immediate go-to. And don't get me wrong, I still have several maxi dresses. In fact, let me cover those with you because this one I just got from Amazon actually probably at the beginning of the summer. So it is also off the shoulder or on the shoulder and it has a belt. So if you like to show off your waist, this is the dress for you. It does have a an elastic 
waist and so it'll stretch a little so again i'll link this below i just thought it was really cute i wanted to go something with a little off the shoulder but i wanted to be covered so i mean it's full length it is all the way maxi dress so i'm anxious to wear that one on this trip um i got this one several years ago it's kind of like a halter neckline anyway the point is maxi dresses if you are a maxi dress girl or let me say this, you don't wanna be like a Sunday dress girl, okay? So you don't want a knee length dress and you don't wanna wear jeans or capris. You wanna dress up a little bit. Maxi dresses are the perfect thing to take on, quite frankly, any cruise. We just got back from Alaska and I'll link those vlogs below too in case you have an Alaska cruise coming up. But even on an Alaska cruise, maxi dresses are can be your go-to. Slip them on, slip them off, boom, comfy. You know, you look dressed up, but it didn't take a lot of effort, which is number one on my list. So another jumpsuit I just got from Amazon is this green one, and I cannot wait to wear this on this cruise. So if you want to try a jumpsuit, and I mean, it is, it's, it looks super long. I mean, I'm just 5'3", okay? And I thought, oh, this is gonna be like bunting up at the bottom. It's not, it fits really nicely. Um, again, if you like to show off a, a little waist or give yourself a waist, right? You don't already have to have a waist. You can create a waist and it has a snap here um, and long sleeves. If you're not a showing off your arms top gal, right? So you get a little bit of v-neck. It's got a little v in the back. I mean, and it comes in so many different colors. Again, I'll link it below. Um, I can't wait to try it out and wear it because you could literally wear this with flats or with heels if you wanted to dress up for dinner. So while we're talking about dinner, by all means, do not forget to take a wrap. As I talked about earlier, the MDR, the main dining room, so to call the MDR, and the theater, uh, seriously, you could hang me on some ships. <laughs> I'm cold natured, but it can be really cold. So something like a pashmina or any kind of shawl or wrap, I got these years ago at Dillard's. I think they were even on sale and I don't wear them anywhere else. I mean, if I'm here at home and I'm going somewhere, I just throw on a jacket, but for packing sake and the different colors. So it doesn't matter, you know, what I'm wearing, a neutral or a black, they could go with any outfit. And it's really easy to carry around the ship if you go out on deck and it's kind of a chilly evening or again in one of those rooms, do not forget a wrap. And while we're talking about being chilly, do not forget to pack. If, if your shawl is enough, that's fine. But if you want something more casual in case it rains in the evening, I'm telling you, you think it's a Caribbean cruise, it's always gonna be sunny and warm. It won't. If it rains, it gets chilly. I, I take usually a sweatshirt or a, you know, like a, a, a zip up hoodie or a jog suit or something for in case it gets chilly in the evening. Um, or in case you want to dress up for dinner and then you want to change, you want to go change and then walk around the ship. Or I also sometimes wear um, separates for dinner. If I'm not going to throw on a maxi dress, then, you know, you get a nice silk or linen or um, pair of pants and a shirt and put some, I usually put turquoise jewelry with this actually, just to give you some ideas about dinner wear. And keep in mind, there will be those days that you might not wanna go to the main dining room. And so you might wanna take five nights of dinner wear or you might not. You might say, you know, we're gonna be in Cozumel until late and we're gonna get in and we're gonna be tired and I'm either not gonna wanna shower immediately and get all dolled up, right? To go to the MDR, to be at the MDR at six o'clock if you have early eating, then you're just gonna go to the buffet. And so you can, you know, keep your hair thrown up and throw on shorts or capris or whatever, um, linen pants and a t-shirt and go to the buffet. So keep that in mind too for your packing is think about maybe I don't need five nights or seven nights of dinner wear. Well, let's move to swimwear. Obviously, I'm not showing you everything that we're packing. I'm just giving you general ideas about what's good to pack for a Caribbean cruise. So um, I take usually, heck, I used to take seven bathing suits for every day of the week because we were always out on the pool deck 
again before we started vlogging. Um, but now I take probably three or four bathing suits. If you want to just take one bathing suit or maybe one bathing suit is all you have, you can rinse it out in the cabin sink and you can carry a little jug of like, you know, swimsuit detergent with you and do that and, you know, lay it out and let it dry and wear it the next day. But if you have several different swimsuits, you know, that's nice. You're going to need a swim cover, right? I found these two from Venus uh, a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago. <laughs> this one, and I'll put some pictures up here as we go along these look like uh, from Amazon. This is one of those long flowy, it buttons all the way down. It buttons all the way down to here. And I usually roll up the sleeves. There were a lot of different styles on this entry in Amazon. It wasn't just this kind. It was like caftans and just a lot of different swim covers. So this is a really good entry for a lot of different things, not just this one, but I just thought this was classy. But I also found this one, which I thought was so cute. Um, it looks like it has a hoodie, but it doesn't. It's just got these tassels right here and it comes in some different colors, like solid colors too. It's got, you know, a pocket. I mean, it's not like you could carry anything heavy, but, and then it's got these tassels at the bottom and the tassels come past my knees. I mean, again, I'm just 5'3", but it's fairly long. Also an option for a beach cover is a large wrap. I got this in a cruise port. Those of you who have been cruising before know you see these by the hundreds and they're like this and they're on a they're on a round rope in just about every store especially in the Cozumel port um and so I bought so I have several of these that I've bought over the years that I just really like the cover of and you know you can find YouTube websites probably that will show you 15 20 different ways to tie this around you as a swim cover. I have worn one of these tied up around my neck and you know, covers right here. I've worn it into the buffet before over my swimsuit because it covers everything that needs to be covered for going into an, an eating venue. So um, don't forget your wraps for that purpose as well. Also, for most cruise lines that are not luxury cruise lines, right? Like Royal Caribbean and Carnival and Virgin and Disney, right? They're, they're just regular, I would use that word, cruise lines. You will be able to wear shorts and a t-shirt, quite frankly, in the main dining room. Each of the cruise lines have their rules about dining attire. And they're not even really rules anymore for most of the regular cruise lines. They are suggestions. I know Royal Caribbean literally now calls them wardrobe suggestions. I say all that to say it's your vacation. So wear what you want to wear within some bounds of reason. You know, if you want to wear, if your husband wants to wear, you know, a polo and shorts to the dining room, you're not going to get thrown out. <laughs> it's going to be okay. So there's a lot of debate online about that. And on the other hand, we have rented a tuxedo before for JJ on the ship. That was before COVID, so I'm not even sure they're doing that anymore. But if you want to dress to the nines, you can do that too. And that's also wonderful. So just know that there's a broad range of acceptability, if you will, about dress wear on the regular cruise lines. Just be sure you get on the website, go to the FAQ section, quite frankly, and you can find out. Or, of course, you're probably in a Facebook cruise group, so you can ask on there. But all of them will have their rules on their websites. If you have gotten value from this video so far, smash that like button and subscribe for more cruise and travel tips. Also, ladies, do not forget your evening purses. I bought these years ago, I think at Ross, you know, Ross for less. I don't know if they're still around, but I like these because they are a little larger inside. They have a little room. So my cell phone easily fits in here. So you can put your cell phone and maybe a lipstick, maybe even a compact powder, um, and your C pass card or your, your cell pass card in a purse. So make sure that if you're taking an evening bag of some sort, one that, you know, you take something neutral that's going to match anything. That's why I got like a neutral and a black, but don't forget that you might have one with like a strap also that allows you to carry it a little more easily. I usually put this 
on the edge of the dining table in the main dining room because it's out of the way but you know it's not on the floor so I don't forget it or anything but don't forget your evening bag ladies if you're going to especially if you're going to dress up for dinner okay men's clothing so I'm not going to show you everything that we take for JJ because literally his daytime uniform is a t-shirt and cargo shorts <laughs> that's where he wears all the time he usually wears tennis shoes um flip-flops you know like it, it doesn't matter if he's not in a swimwear he's in a t-shirt and cargo shorts so that's his daytime wear generally so for dinner on like Royal Caribbean um he generally for dinner wears a button down and just a pair of like these are I don't even know what brand this is I think we got them at Academy it's it is Academy it's Magellan just a so kind of a kind of a dress pant but not a formal dress pant this is really like a dress jean i think it's like a cotton material and a button down sometimes he also wears a short sleeve button down he doesn't generally wear shorts to the main dining room but you can it's it's just not a big deal on the regular cruise lines now especially if you're wearing like dress shorts with a polo or something like that but again I've seen, I seen shorts and t-shirts all the time in there. So you, they're not going to kick you out, again, on the regular cruise lines. Um, we also, he also got a new suit. Uh, well, it's not a suit jacket. It's a sport coat, right? So we have taken a suit for him uh, about two, three times. Sometimes he wears it. Sometimes he doesn't, right? Um, it's, you know, a trick to get these packed and so they don't look crazy wrinkled in the bag. And I'll give you a trick for doing that. Um, he will wear this without a tie, just an open collar dress shirt and dress pants for that. But again, if you take a sports coat, your man can wear jeans, right? Okay, and even a t-shirt. You know, t-shirt under a sport coat is frequently done these days and is fashionable. So the way to keep things less wrinkled in your suitcase is to put dry cleaning plastic bags between the items. So what I do is I take his long sleeve shirts and I, you know, fold them up like you would to go in a suitcase and I get as many of the wrinkles out as I can. And then I put a plastic bag over this shirt and then I would lay another shirt on top of it and then a plastic bag and then a shirt, you know, and it keeps them sliding over each other instead of sticking and setting in the wrinkles. So there you go. Okay, let's move to gear. Now I'm not gonna go over my full cruise gear list with you. <laughs> I will link, however, um, a video below, which is my new cruise essentials gear video. Um, updated for 24, it's my newest one. So, but some things that you just will really need and other things that you can't forget. So one thing, because I was talking about swimwear that I think is really cool, and I will link these items below as well so you can search for the one, the brand that you like um, of that item. So these are wet bags. And I thought I got two, but I could only find one in a drawer. And these are great. One, if you want to pack your swimsuits in them for the trip, you can, but the main reason they come in handy is if you still have items that are damp. If day six, you were out by the pool, you were out in the hot tub until 10 p.m., and then you get up, you know, the next morning and you have to be off the ship, your swimsuit is still wet. It's literally a wet bag. So these are really cool, and I will link that down below. Also, two things that I just recently bought. One is a jewelry container a jewelry kit and I used to literally put my jewelry in the old-fashioned um, crown roll bag the purple <laughs> the purple bag I'll put a picture up here with the drawstring right I used to just especially my large costume jewelry I used to just dump it all in there this folks helps tremendously this happens to be the t-bond brand and I'll link it below but there are a lot of different choices for a jewelry organizer I like this one because it has this zip pocket here and then it has all these for your chains to hang down and a little pocket for them to hang into and then it has this big zip pocket here uh, and then of course for rings um, so anyway any kind of jewelry organizer ladies is very helpful same thing I just now got into 
the toiletry kit world. <laughs> I used to put all my toiletries in Ziploc bags. One, if they leak in my in my suitcase, I don't want to get them all over everywhere, but also that's just all I knew. I just like stick them in gallon bags, okay? So I finally, last year, got a hanging toiletry kit bag and I love it. They have, again, a lot of different brands for a toiletry bag. The reason this is so handy is, one, and you can tell we just came back from Christmas and I've already started packing, right? Um, and while I'm reminded about shampoo and conditioner, ladies or men who have a lot of hair or care a great deal about their hairdos, do not depend on what's in the cruise cabin shower for shampoo and conditioner. Take your own. Always take your own. It is a three-in-one, which means it's a body wash and a shampoo and a conditioner. At the least, it's a two-in-one. So I'm not going to wash my hair with something that I've washed my body with. <laughs> I don't know how my hair would end up, but probably not very good. So if you care, now if you have some little short do and it doesn't matter, then you can use whatever is in the cruise cabin shower. But as long as I'm looking at my shampoo and conditioner bottles, it reminded me to tell you, always take your own. So I like this, you know, you can put makeup, brushes, or whatever in both of these. You can, so. if you want to, hang this on the inside of the bathroom cabin door. Or you can do what I always suggest, and what's in the gear video that's linked below, is you take an over-the-door shoe holder, organizer, right? And you take all your things out of this and put them into that, because then they're handy as you reach out of the shower and reach for them. I'll put a picture up here that shows you how the shoe holder is hung inside the cabin bathroom door. What this is good for though, if you go and stay in a hotel the night before, you've got everything right here and it's all organized. And then when you get to your cabin is when you take it out and put it into the shoe organizer. So again, I'll link this one below, but they have a lot of different brands. This all in one fell swoop instead of four or five gallon bags. This goes in my suitcase all at one time. Okay, so what's also been very handy gear-wise is a electrical cord bag. And this is if you have, you know, all of you in your party, I'm sure will have a cell phone, so you'll have cords. You also might have um, like a Kindle or an iPad of some sort, and your kids might have some kind of gaming something with them, right? And so you need somewhere to put all your electrical cords. And so again, I'll link this below. They have a lot of different brands and different sizes. This one may end up, because we have all of our like YouTube filming gear, this may end up being too small for us, but I was just putting all of our cords, again, in a gallon bag with the word cords written on it. So I'm gonna try this, this, time but just for a family you know of like three or four um who have again their phones and game boys or whatever this might be handy for your cords and along this line of electrical outlets um usb hub most things plug in these days as opposed to the three-pronger most electronics plug in with a hub so i highly recommend this is going to be accepted by every cruise line a USB hub that is. The ones that often get confiscated are the ones that have three prongers and the USB or only three prongers. But it depends on what port you're at because the port employees are contract labor. They work for the city usually. They don't work for the cruise line and they don't always know the rules. And so the rule for years was if it's not surge protected, it's allowed. However, I've heard a lot of stories lately that it doesn't matter if it's surge protected or not. If it's a three prong outlet of some kind, they're taking them. So my recommendation is put it in your packed luggage. I had a three prong outlet with some USBs also that I have taken for probably 12 cruises, 13, 14 maybe cruises, and it was never taken. It was always in my checked packed luggage not on a carry-on. The one time I took one of those little square um, 
things that you just plug in and it has several three prongers around the edges. <laughs> I put it in my carry-on, it was taken. It definitely wasn't surge protected. It didn't even have a cord on it. It was just a one plug with the three around the edges that give you more three prong plugs. It was taken. So just put whatever you're taking, try to follow the rules, obviously not surge protected, put it in your packed luggage. And again, 15 cruises probably, and they just always ignored mine. Another thing that comes in handy because every cruise ship I've been on, no matter where it was built or where it sails, has a EU plug as well as the three prong plugs on the desk area. So this for you Americans is an EU, well you Europeans too, this is an EU converter. Okay, I'll link that below. Again, they have a lot of different kinds, but it has two three prong and two USB and it goes right in that EU outlet on your desk area. Another gear item that we I actually can't do without. It is a luggage scale. And obviously here at home, we weigh our bags. This is if you're flying, obviously. The airline has baggage weight rules. The cruise lines do not. So if you're driving to the port, it doesn't matter how much your bags weigh. And it doesn't matter how many bags you have for you new cruisers out there. <laughs> but if you're, if you're flying and you have to be, I think they're all 50 pounds or under now. This comes in very handy on the ship. So get you a digital luggage scale as well. Something else that I just found that I think is the most brilliant idea since sliced bread is non-disposable straws. If you don't know, if you're new to cruising, the cruise lines recently went from pl plastic straws to help save the ocean to paper straws. Yeah, think about that. A paper straw being in a fruity beverage for 30 minutes or longer, yeah, they get soggy. It's really bad. And so a lot of people have started taking their own straws. Either they'll buy a set of straws or they'll get these. These. This is a four pack of non-disposable straws. It comes with a cleaner inside of it. So here's the straw cleaner and it just pulls out and there's your straw. It already has the plastic piece on the end of it where you put your mouth and it is retractable. So there you go. And this is a four pack of them. So if you have a big family, everyone wants their own straw and you just put it back in its little container and screw it on, right? I thought that was the coolest thing. So I'll link these below too. Something else for your cabin which again is just a brilliant idea. I don't remember when I found out about these, but magnet hooks. These are, I think 85 pounds, but they have these all over Amazon and you can get up to 150 pound. You know, I don't know what you're gonna hang on it, but it's good for that wet bathing suit we talked about if you're in the hot tub on night six, right before you leave the next morning and you need to hang up your bathing suit to dry, um, or a towel, or a bag, or a shawl, or a jacket, or a hat. We use them oftentimes for to hang hats and they are magnet. And if you didn't know, the inside cabin walls of a cruise cabin are metal, except for some levels, I think maybe some grand suites maybe all the walls are not metal, but generally in a balcony, I think even a junior suite and below, the walls are metal. And so these magnet hooks come in very handy in your cabin. I always take a first aid kit in my bag, always. Medicine and first aid items are very expensive on the ship. Everything's very expensive, but especially first aid items. So if you end up needing a Band-Aid, Literally, if you need a Band-Aid, you're probably gonna get, have to go to the Med Bay and I don't know what they charge you for a Band-Aid, $10 probably, <laughs> I don't know. So I carry a Ziploc bag of Band-Aids and like Mucinex, cold flu capsules, as well as some like, you know, Gas-X or indigestion. I have some Dramamine here. One of the most important things that I really like is the Bonine for seasickness. Now let me tell you something about seasickness. JJ has started using the patches. However, I got a grand warning about patches for y'all, okay? So please listen. If you haven't listened to anything else, listen right now. If you're going to wear the patch, 
seasick patch that your doctor has to prescribe. Make sure you talk to your doctor about the interaction of the patch with the other medication you're on, if you're on other medication, right? We've had two friends, two different people ended up in the med bay because the patch interacted negatively with their current medication. Remind your doctor, hey doc, can you look and see everything else that I'm, I'm on? Can you see if the patch is gonna interact with that? Or maybe your pharmacist, cause you know, that's what pharmacists do. So maybe both of those people, if you're not on any other medication, you'll probably be great. All that to say, first aid kit, very necessary. And as long as we're talking about things for your body, right? Please don't forget your aloe vera gel, okay? Very important. The Caribbean sun is super hot. It's not like, even if you live in California or Arizona or Texas or a really hot climate, the Caribbean sun is just different and you will get some burnt and ruin your whole vacation. So none of us want that to happen. So please take aloe vera gel. And along those lines, do not forget your sunscreen. Same reason. The sun is just not the same, okay? This is, I will link this below. I do get this on, on Amazon. There's a lot of reef safe sunscreens on Amazon. This is one of them. This is the Think Sport brand. And this one happens to be SPF 50 plus, right? And it's waterproof and all the good things. And something else that always goes at the top of my cruise gear list. Yes, number one top is, you've probably heard of it, poopery, yeah. I don't think I need to explain, but I will just say those cruise cabin bathrooms are very small and not well ventilated. Yeah, enough said, okay? I usually on Amazon buy a larger bottle. I bought this set together because it came with a big bottle and a little bottle, and then this just refills. So I take this in my luggage, obviously, because it's much smaller. They come in lots of different scents and colors and bottle sizes and all that. So. It's a must for your cruise cabin. Also, do not forget your sunglasses, okay? Duh, I mean, you always pack your sunglasses, right? The reason I thought about them is because these, right, these are pretty cute. I mean, this is like the black and white ones. This is the three pack. These are the brown ones, okay? These are reader sunglasses. Yeah, okay, all you people who need a little help, seeing your phone or the book you're out on the edge of the pool but you don't need your glasses for distance that's me i just need readers okay and so down here in the reader area it has correction for you but up top it's just regular clear so i never even knew they had reader sunglasses but they do i will link this set below but again they have all different kind of brands and of course the level whatever level you need for reader glasses and last but not least, shoes. Okay, ladies mainly, because really for JJ, we take him a pair of dress shoes and a tennis shoes and a pair of flip flops. Like that's all he needs. And actually if your dress men, if your dress shoes are um, like our tennis shoes also, you know, because men are doing that now, especially with like a sports coat and a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, you can wear tennis shoes. But also they have those tennis shoes that look like dress shoes almost. So you can, you might just need one pair of those kind of shoes and your flip flops. <laughs> so you might need real tennis shoes if you're going to the gym, by the way, most ships do have a gym, but so I didn't bring JJ shoes out here because that's much easier. So, but ladies, let me make it easy for you too. Never in my 19 cruises have I ever looked over at a woman's shoes and thought, Wow, why is she wearing those shoes? Never, never, one single time have I ever judged a woman's shoes on a cruise, okay? So when we first started cruising, I, I give this bit of advice because I was taking a pair of, um, you know, animal print heels and a pair of black heels and a pair of neutral heels and a pair of sling, you know, slingback mules. I mean, I was just filling up my suitcase with dress shoes when really, Nobody cares. It's okay, ladies, okay? So this is what I've moved to, okay? Flip-flops. One, I'll link these below. They're from Amazon. They are super comfortable, and they have this little bit of heel here. I have these in this light tan, uh, neutral, and also in brown, but they come in like gray also. They're super comfortable. They don't 
hurt my feet. I've, I had some plastic cheap flip-flops, which I still have several pairs of, and I take a couple of those because they go flat in the suitcase. But I, these don't hurt my feet. I can walk in them all day long and I don't get the red marks on the top of my foot. So uh, these are comfortable. Um, so flip-flops, obviously, if you want to take a pair of bling flip-flops for the main dining room, I see that a lot. And then your pool flip-flops, that's great. And then I usually take like a pair of slides, right? Because I wear slides with like, you know, my comfy linen pants. I just wear flat slides. When it comes to dress shoes, ladies, I have found the answer. So again, just like with your seasickness meds, you need to listen up, listen up, okay? Clear heels. Yes, I know. They might look like stripper shoes. Let me tell you the benefit of them. Right, clear heels clear heel they go with everything if i'm wearing black if i'm wearing animal print if i'm wearing green if i'm wearing pink if i'm wearing gold if i'm wearing silver they go with everything i take these for dress wear and nothing else this is the only heel that i take okay now i might take some wedges or something like to wear you know during the day or maybe with a sundress okay so it depends on what you're wearing for evening but if you're literally wearing like um you know dress dress jumpsuits or um dresses i mean i will probably i'll probably wear wedges with this sundress actually i would wear these with this jumpsuit easily that's what i'll wear with this you know so this comes in i will link them below there from amazon they come in different heel height and if you're wanting to some different colors they come in like this instead of neutral they have orange and green maybe pink i can't remember and also they have it in a smaller heel i think this is like a three and a half incher um, they have it like a one and a half so like a little mule so you will have some different options. If your Caribbean cruise is stopping in Cozumel, which so many of them do, or Costa Maya, watch these videos here and here for a port tour and excursion ideas in both of those ports. Thanks for stopping by. Be blessed.